Right, hello everyone, PureChaosX here with some more of the Tamiya Grasshopper restoration and as you can see the main bulk of it, with the exception of the body shell, is done, pretty much. Um, there's not much left I want to do or need to do to the chassis uh, with the exception of maybe get some Blitzer Beetle wheels with a bit more, for a bit more grip. Um, and for the chassis, uh, that's about it, so everything is in there which was a pain of getting this motor in there and all the cables and everything to, to get where I need it to go Ooh, God it was harder than I thought it was gonna be because <laughs> it, it feels quite small in the chassis compared to most Tamiya's so yeah uh, did have a big problem with the gearbox uh, and that is that it does click uh, not so bad in forward but in reverse I don't know if you can actually hear that when I go back. Hmm. Only, actually, the main annoyance about this thing is that I completely forgot about this, is that it's screwed on. And that you have to take the thing off every single time you want to get into it. Uh, I can reach... I can reach the um, battery connectors from outside, so I don't actually need to take the body off. But I do need to take the body off to obviously show you the inside. So that's a minor gripe. Uh, hopefully on this this coming Saturday I'll be getting to Halfords to get the primer, some sandpaper and the paint. Although I have yet to decide what colour. It's either going to be red or purple <clears throat> as those are my favourite colours. <clears throat> so and there's everything in there all neat and tidy. I actually cut the bullet connectors off and soldered the wires together. So basically I soldered the uh, speed controller directly to the motor. It makes things a bit awkward if I ever want to replace one of those two, but hopefully I'm not going to. So there's the receiver, servo, and the pumpkin steering mechanism and steering links actually seem to work perfectly fine. So yeah. Uh, let's plug this in. But yeah, the gearbox. I, I, I have had this thing apart for over an hour yesterday, trying to figure out why, under acceleration, it clicks when going forwards. So I've got the power button on the side here, which is probably not going to stay there, but I don't really know where to put it at the moment. We'll turn that on. So if you watch, watch the steering, that's good. That's, the steering links from the pumpkin work. But if we go forward, you'll be able to hear how loud it is, the clicking noise. Yes, it seems to be fine in reverse, but when you're going forward... I don't know if you can actually hear it. Okay, this is probably a lot faster than I was expecting a 21 turn to be. Uh, and it's using an 18 tooth pinion. So, it's using the right setup. Um, I've looked at all the gears, the gears are all clean, they've been greased, there's nothing has been fractured, cracked, split, there's no teeth missing, the gears are in perfect condition. So, it's definitely the motor against the spur, or the pinion against the spur. That's what's causing the noise, because uh, if when you're spinning the gearbox without the motor in, it's smooth as butter. There's no noise. It's nice and smooth. I mean, the gears are smooth, but nice. And... See the gears all in there. They're nice and loose. I might take it apart again at one point just to shove a bit more grease in there, but. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I, again, I don't know if you can actually hear it. But it seems to be, oh, excuse me, it seems to be fine in reverse. And it's only under acceleration. So, that's the only kind of issue with it at the moment. And it also seems as though this 
spring is a little bit looser than this one. This one feels quite tight and springy still, whereas this one feels a bit loose. But I will be replacing these anyway. Uh, <clears throat> there is a set of oil shocks from China. I don't know how good they're going to be. I try not to order from China just because of how long it bloody takes to get here. And if they're bad, it's a bit of a bugger to return them. But uh, yeah, and as you can see, the Acro Shop wheels and tires fit. And this does not interfere with the bumper like I thought it would, because it looks like it would when it turns, but it actually doesn't. And this servo does not want to turn manually, so uh, just to demonstrate. I mean, that one almost does. That one seems to turn a lot more than this one. I'm not quite sure why. It's all adjusted correctly. You see, it does look it's straight. So, well, this servo does feel a bit off. Like, like it doesn't feel as smooth as the other ones. Like, it definitely looks like it's turning more in one direction than the other, but I can't actually seem to get rid of that. <laughs> I can't seem to make that any better, even though, despite all the adjustments I can make. On this controller, it just does not seem to. I mean, that is, it's centered. That is that is centered. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't seem to get the. Uh... Oh. Dual rate set up correctly. In both directions, so it's kind of weird. But yeah, um, but yeah, you can know, you can definitely hear it there. I don't know. Maybe it's something that'll wear off over time. I don't know. But yeah. But there we have it. This is the the main sort of chassis done. Uh, just need to get <laughs> the oil shocks maybe from China see how that goes like I said I might get some blitz of beta wheels uh, tires for it just to get a bit more grip because these have absolutely no grip even on bone dry tarmac concrete no no grip whatsoever uh, I do want to paint the wheels possibly gunmetal gray or something just to give it a bit of a contrast against a possibly red body uh, yeah but yeah that, that's this is my restoration almost done of a vintage grasshopper which I think it looks quite smart with these wheels and tires so just these are a bit of a pain just to put the body on and off but uh, yeah and you know what I might even at one point get a hornet body and the body posts just so I can uh, switch between a hornet body and a grasshopper why not I do like the hornet body Oh yeah, and the uh, the LED kit, the uh, light bulbs, or the light pods, I want to get some of those as well. But yeah, I don't know, you can't really see it from there, but this spring, it kind of le leaves up there. Yeah, I don't want to put weight on it. Not there, obviously, but yeah, when I... <laughs> This one is sort of compressed ever so slightly compared to this one. So those definitely need to be replaced and it's the one thing I don't have. Uh, oh yeah, and the uh, pivot, the pivoting gearbox, or the tilting gearbox. Uh, I just need to get the springs because I've already got the, um, uh, the, the, the bits that go on the side to allow it to tilt, but I don't have the springs. So I just need to get hold of some of those and uh, will have a much better gearbox as well so yeah okay so a few things I still want to do to the gib to the to the chassis Ugh, I hope I can actually I'm, I'm hoping that the primer will show the ink the um, impurities in the paint so I can sand it down but yeah there we go that's that's the sort of the main <laughs> the main thing done just need to get the body done and uh, few more of the little bits around here 
which is the shocks and the tires. Not quite sure when I'm going to paint the wheels. I'm actually scared of scratching the paint trying to get these on because these were a bitch to get on these wheels. <laughs> so, yeah. And then obviously try and get the shocks, see how long they take and if they're any good or not. I mean, they're not cheap. They're like 30 odd quid. So, yeah. But we'll see. But yeah, if anyone wants to restore these and they want to improve the steering, the Midnight Pumpkin steering links do work. So, yeah, there you go. That's a. Should be a lot better than those spindly little wires that you bend inside the servo horn. So, yeah, there we go. So, hopefully, the next time I make a video will be the body. I'm still figuring out how to paint this. Like, I always had the idea of hanging it from the ceiling or something with these screw holes and then just sort of like spraying it as it's hanging there. Uh, which should be doable, but uh, we'll have to see. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to leave it there for now. So, <laughs> thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I shall return with uh, a few more parts for this as and when they happen, such as the body and the possibly the extra bits for the chassis. So,. But there we go, it's, uh, it's basically up and running. So I might try and go outside at some point and get some footage once I put the uh, phone holder back on that. Uh, and once it's dry, because at the moment it's wet and these things have no grip as I say. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely none whatsoever. But it does make driving it quite fun though because it does skid and drift a lot. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna leave it there for now. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video whenever that may be. So. Until then, see you soon. Bye.